Hi everyone, welcome back. In previous lecture, we have created and set up the React application. In this lecture, we are going to understand React application project structure. Well, if you go to VS Code and go to our React application over here. So here, let us take a look into the important files and folders of our React application. Well, let us begin with package.json file. So basically, package.json file contains all the dependencies and scripts required for our React application. For example, if you go to dependency section, here you can see the dependencies like React, React DOM. And in this course, we are using React 18 plus. All right, next here we have scripts section. So this script section contains all the scripts that are required to start the React application, to build the React application, to test the React application and to eject the React application. All right. So just remember package.json file contains all the dependencies and scripts required for our React application. And whenever we run npm install command, then npm will refer this dependency section and it will install all these dependencies in a node underscore modules folder. Next we have public folder. Within the public folder, we keep all the files that are accessible publicly. And within the public folder, you can see the important file that is index.html. Well, we basically create the single page React applications, right? And in single page React application, we can find only one HTML file named index.html. And if you look at the index.html code over here, and especially if you look at the body, body contains a div with ID root. So this div is responsible to render the React component. All right, so this div is responsible to render the React root component. And most of the time, we don't change this index.html file content. We may change this header section to include the scripts and CSS files, but we don't touch the body section. Okay. So the body should contain a single div and this div is responsible to render the React component. Next, we have SRC folder. Within SRC folder, all the development related stuff goes. And within SRC folder, we have app.js file. So this app.js file contains a root component named app component. Next we have index.js file. So this index.js file is a main entry point for our React application. And if you look at the source code of this file, react.com.createRoot and then document.getElementById and then id root. Well this create root method will get the div by using the id root. Well if you go to index.html file it contains a div with id root all right and if you go back to again index.js so here this react dom dot create root method will get the div by using this id that is root okay and then it will render app component within that div for example let me repeat again if you go to index.html file it contains the body and body has a div with id root next this react dom dot create root method will get the div from this index.html by using its root id and then it will render this app component within that div okay next we have app.css and index.css files so these files basically contains all the css related stuff okay so these are the important files and folders in our react application now let us understand the flow in our react application well whenever we access the react application from the browser then this index.html file will get served in the browser next the index.js file will load into the browser well if you go to src folder go to index.js so index.js is a main entry point for our react application right so once the index.html file will load into the browser then immediately this index.js file will also load into the browser and then this piece of code will execute. Well, if you look at the code over here, react dom dot create root. So this method will get the div from the index.html file by using the id root. Next, it will you know render this app component within the div. Well, if you go to app component, app component contains this HTML code. Well, don't bother about this HTML code right now. So this is basically called a JSX. We'll understand what is JSX and how we can write the JSX code in upcoming lectures. So just as of now understand, this is the app component and it, it returns some HTML code. 
and you can see the HTML code h1 hello world. So this will basically print the heading in the web page. For example, if you go to browser and you can see hello world is displayed in the browser. Okay. And next, if you can inspect this web page, go to console. So here you can see download the React Dev Tools for a better development experience. Just go ahead and click on this link and let us add this React Developer Tools extension in the Chrome browser. So next, so here I'm using Chrome browser. So I'm going to install this extension in a Chrome browser. But if you are using Firefox or Edge, then accordingly you can add the extension. So here just click on install for Chrome. And next click on this add to Chrome button. And then click on this add extension. All right. Perfect. Next go to this extensions and here you can see react De react developer tools extension is added. All right. Great. Next let's go back to our project. And here let us inspect this page again and then refresh and here you can see the new tab named components. So just click on this components tab. So under this tab you can see all the react components. As of now there is only one component named app component right and just click on this app component and here you can see the details so this app component is used in a source file named index.js next this app component will be rendered by this method okay so basically you can see all the component related information over here all right so this react developer tools extension is pretty useful to track the components and the component tree okay great well notice here by looking into this components tab we can clearly understand the react application flow well whenever we access the react application using browser then the index.html file will get served and then this index.js file will get loaded and this index.js file is a source for this app component okay so just remember whenever we access the react application from the browser then the index.html file will get first served in the browser and then index.js file will get loaded in the browser and then this index.js file will render the app component okay so this is how the flow goes in a react application so let me summarize what we have understood in this lecture we pretty much understood the important files and folders in the react application and we have also installed react developer tools extension in a chrome browser and we have also understood the you know flow in the react application all right great in next lecture we will take a look into the components well the components are the building blocks in a react application so you have to understand the components in order to build the react applications all right so in next lecture we will take a look into react components all right great i will see you in the next lecture